And, uh, you know, I've had people comment about it because they didn't know exactly how to, to deal with that in their own lives. And I think it's important that we're a, a well-rounded ministry, being able to talk about a lot of things. Again, good to have all of you here. Got your Bibles, the book of Philippians chapter 4. You haven't had a lot of opportunity to, to testify. So tonight, if you've got a testimony you want to share among the folk, amen, I'd love to hear from you. You want got a quick testimony tonight? Shot a deer? Want to confess so I'll know what the back strap's coming this way? Amen. All right. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Philippians 4, verse 6. Oh, I already saw it on Facebook. That's why I was giving her an opportunity to say something. The, uh, uh, give God your. We say that, and we've heard it said, but many times we don't know, okay, what is it I'm supposed to give God? And, you know, I just want to carry on a little bit with the Thanksgiving theme, and we got a little time to move toward the, the Christmas. Uh, Again, I, I'm, I'm traditional when it comes to Thanksgiving is Thanksgiving, Christmas is Christmas. You'll very seldom, if, if I ever say happy holidays, it's a mistake. Because uh, I, I, I'm all about the birth of Christ. Amen. I, I see the liberalism. It's always tried to push in. Uh, you know, I've, I've taught you over for years that Xmas is not Xing Jesus out, though other uh, commercialism thinks that it is. The, the letter X actually in the New Testament Greek was the letter for Christ. And so to shorten the word uh, Christmas, they would put the X and the mus in. So that's when I encouraged you to go into stores that do the Xmas and thank them for putting Jesus back into Christmas. Amen. And teaching them. You know, so there's fun things like that. And let me just give you a little insight. I just come from Alabama, as you know. And I was up on the mountain, on, on Wheeler Mountain. And I stopped by the general store. Every little community has a general store. And it's Malone's store, and James has gone on to be with the Lord. And him and my dad used to pick music together. If you understand bluegrass, you're getting together and picking was like the greatest fellowship you could do. And uh, they even gave me my dad's master tone Gibson banjo to bring back with me. So I brought uh, a couple things back home. The, the banjo, which means so much to me. When I just hear it strummed, it reminds me of my pop, Sam. And then the other thing I got was my granny's 12-gauge shotgun, which is literally over four foot tall. This gun is about this tall, and it's a real real skinny old and it's so old you can't even read the date on it of how old it is it's easily over 100 years old and I remember my dad taking it away from my granny when she'd go outside and shoot buzzards now you can't eat buzzards they're not good for you but granny always thought they were after her and I said granny if you stay in the house they won't get you but if she saw them circling she'd go outside and start shooting buzzards you know so I got that shotgun and I, and I got to Gibson. So I was down at this store and I'm talking to these guys there. And uh, once, uh, you know, he's probably about six, eight years younger than me. And then his dad's there who's running it. His name's Larry Isbell. Matter of fact, Larry watches me quite often. And, and uh, he's also a preacher. So I get to find out, Baptist preacher. And the young man looks at me and he said, Man, I loved your Dodge Charger, Jerry. That, that car, I loved your old green Charger. I, I wish you still had, I wish I had that. And I mean, oh, come on, man. You're making my heart hurt. I, I love that old car too. And then I said, How's the church going here? How's the Baptist church? They just got rid of another preacher. I said, Well, what did this one do? Because every time I'm home, they're getting rid of the Baptist preacher. And they said, well, he mentioned that Jesus wasn't born December the 25th. That he was probably born sometime in the spring. And that's true. But it doesn't matter that it's true if the deacons are mad at you for saying that Jesus wasn't born on December the 25th. And so they got rid of him. And I'm thinking, I thank God I pastor the little country church. <laughs> Where I can say, because the things I say, have said over the last uh, uh, 15, 16 years would have got me fired over and over and over and over again. You know, if you upset the deacons. And, and so I, I thank God that I don't have to go that route. And, and then when I hear that, I go, our churches sometimes are so silly. Hey, man, what's it matter the when? Just as long as we pick a date to celebrate. Amen. So, you know, and many times you are the same way. You, you hear me say November the 10th, 1979. You go, well, I don't know when I was born again. I don't know what date it was. Just pick a day and celebrate it. Amen. Don't, don't beat yourself up because you can't remember, you know, the day that you got born again or the day you were baptized. Just pick a day and celebrate it. Amen. That's what I would say to you. Philippians 4, 6. 
Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We were singing a song, and I think it was probably the second song, that talked about God being our refuge. And the Spirit of the Lord came over me right at that moment, and I wanted to tell you that for some of you, I'm praying that you have trouble so that you'll find out that He's your refuge. You need some trouble so you'll find out He's your shelter. Many times in life, we move through life, and we don't realize what a dark night is. We don't, we, you know, and I meet people that just have these, this idea that, that, you know, there's a, a God somewhere out there, but He is my shelter. He is my refuge. I've been in trouble. I've seen trouble. I, 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 I run into trouble with my family. I hang out with them at times in trouble. My phone daily, I get a text or a message from somebody who's in trouble. And when, when we realize that He is our shelter, that it's one of the things we can do. I can give God my troubles. I can move in to, to a place in life where He shelters me. And there's nothing like a shelter in, in a cold rain. There's nothing like the shelter in the, in, when, it, when, it is, when, when life is beating you up to realize that in, in this, I don't know how to explain it to you until you've gone through it, until you've just needed a shelter, until you needed God to be that for you. And you turn toward him and you start realizing that, that, that if I can be more like Christ, it changes my life. Now, I'm never going to get away from this from any time I preach, but attitude is so important when it comes to Thanksgiving. And right now, you're going to need more love over the next few weeks. If you're going to be shopping, if you're going to be dealing with gifts, you know, used to, if you gave somebody a $10 gift, they were happy. Now our kids, it's $100, $150, $200. Everything is expanded, you know, and trying to help people to be just grateful for, for the little things in life. You're talking about grateful. I'm grateful for that banjo. I may never play it, but I'm grateful to have my pop's banjo, granny's gun. Those, because all I got from dad when he passed was a, was a, a level. His old red wood level. And then I found his green thermos with a dent in it. You know, and I, those are things I'm thankful for. Those little things, that, that Aladdin uh, thermos like that. So there's nothing more powerful than your attitude if you can shift that right now. And you are your attitude. Your attitude is you. I've often said, you walk in that door, I saw your attitude before I saw you. And I can pick it up on your kids too, and you can pick it up on my kids. Amen. Attitude is so important. Attitude creates your world. It designs your destiny. It determines your success or failure in any venture in life. It's more powerful than wealth, beauty, title, or social status. It can make beauty ugly and homelessness attractive. It opens and closes doors. It's attitude. To have that right attitude when you walk into a place. Sunday morning, I knew Sunday would be a low in attendance. It's that way for 20-something years of pastor. And it's the day after Thanksgiving or the Sunday after. And I saw it on Facebook. I saw one pastor, he counted his absentees and put it on Facebook. How many people were absent versus how many were there? He had more absent than he had people there. And he was really down. I thought to myself, I know about that. So when I hit Sunday, I just adjusted my attitude before I got in here. If it was an empty pew, and it was full house here, it was beautiful. The other church, we, we got to get it rolling again because, again, another hurricane hit. And people get dislocated. Attitude is so important. It's the mindset that determines our interpretation of and response to our environment. It's our way of thinking. It's attitude. It's an inward feeling expressed by behavior. And if I'm looking to give God something, then I've got to first deal with my attitude and adjust it so I can make sure things go through and, and happen correctly. Now listen, maintain the right attitude when the going gets tough. It's very important. Life has turbulence to it. It has some shaking points to it. If you've been with me a while, you've heard me say a lot of this. Turbulation won't crash you. Wrong reactions do. When things get shaken, um, I'm a biker. And there's one thing that scares me about biking. It's not you. It's called a high-speed wobble. Now, you're never going to get it, Joseph, under 25 miles an hour. But, Ken, you get up around 85, 90, 100 miles an hour on a bike, and that bike starts wobbling, and that front end starts shaking. When it does that, your reaction is what's going to determine whether you're going to come out of it or not. And, and I can be honest with you. Sometimes I've sped up to get out of it, and sometimes I've slowed down to get out of it. It's just according to what it's like at that moment. But it's one of them scary moments in life when you're moving, you're thinking everything's good, and all of a sudden, it'll happen on a bicycle. You can get a wobble on a bicycle. Uh, and, and in a plane, it's the same way. When that plane starts doing things, it's my reaction to the situation, how I'm going to deal with when it happens. Amen. You, you know, I've often said this. You, 
people say, uh, I've jumped out of a plane. Some of you have jumped out of planes. But you can jump out of a plane without a parachute. But you can only do it once. <laughs> Difficulties come when we internalize unfortunate circumstances. In, life is going to have some unfortunate circumstances. A, a doctor's report, a financial report. And what really matters during those times is what's going to happen uh, in us. Not to us, but what's, what's going on inside of here. James 1, 2 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance, and perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. For us to think that it's not important to be patient, we're fooling ourselves. Patience is something, and we laugh about our traffic. We laugh, we laugh about, oh, look, at I was in Walmart, and they only had two lines open, and they had all, this, uh, all these people, and now you're getting curb service. I don't know where this is going, but we're in a really unthankful time of life. Amen. We're, we're mad at the drive through We're mad at the curb service because they didn't put our favorite salad dressing in the sack that we ordered. Come on. There's so many things. The teller at the bank, we get upset with them because they're taking too long to count. And, and so this unthankfulness starts moving all over us. When the Scripture says, "Be," uh, you know, and I've, I've given you stuff that the, the New Testament believers never had to deal with. They had to deal with things like uh, not being able to eat that day. Amen. Not having any other clothes to wear. Having to deal with hard life uh, circumstances. Uh, the, the death of a child because there's no medical relief for them. So he says, look, when you're going through times of perseverance, uh, uh, you, you need to allow that to build your faith. Now, I'm preaching this to me. You know that. And as I move through life, I got to remind myself, okay. You know, it wasn't a, a couple of years ago. I could drive over here just like that. On any night, I could come over here. Now, the traffic both ways. It's just back to back. It's just blowed up. Our area in New Caney has exploded. Just like Crosby did a few years ago, it's happening over there. And now it's like it's hard to get, in, get between them. So I've got to remind myself, perseverance is good for me. I've got to persevere. I've got to stay with it. Amen. And be patient. And that's also in life. Amen. He says, not lacking anything. You have to do it with thanks. Realize that rough times will not last forever. Thank God. They're not going to last forever. When you have a problem, your entire outlook is colored by it. With just everything about that situation and, and uh, the, the sickness of a child, it's all colored by that moment. And many times it's not the size of the problem, but it's the length of it that weighs us down. Again, a second, a second flood. It's, been, it's the length. The, the first one almost killed us. Killed us. Right. Amen with a T. Killed us. Amen. Took a year to finally get in. This one here, by the end of this week, we should be back in our offices out at the other camp. Hopefully be back in my home by the end of this week or by, by Sunday. So we're, we're moving along real good. But it's the length of it that wears you out. It just keeps on going on and on and on. So we can get through that. It's important. Uh, so, my, you know, my favorite, one of my favorite verses, I don't know where it's at, but it's written in the Old Testament. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. Whatever you've gone through in life, this too shall pass. Pastor, it's been a bit of divorce. This too shall pass. Amen. Finance is this too shall. The kids are wearing me out. They'll be grown someday if you keep feeding them. Amen. It, it will pass. You know, and, and guys, this ain't on the overhead, but the bottom line is simply this. Try to make major decisions before the storm. You know, everything we're doing now is preparing in case... Uh, this morning I was talking with Miss Judy. We got these 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 great big ovens in the in the cafeteria. And they're uh, how much they cost, Joseph? You know, like ten grand, it's like ten thousand dollars for these giant convection ovens. Well, the bottom one's gone out because of the flood. The top one still works. And I said, okay, well, so we need two of them. I said, so what we're going to do is we're going we're not going to stack them this time. We got one on top of this cabinet, one on top of that cabinet over there. Amen. We're just making sure whatever we do. That everything is uh, uh, up a little bit more. Oh, it ain't never going to flood again. But in case, amen, we just wanted the duration to be just a little bit shorter. So thanks is a good thing. Psalm 92 one says, a psalm or song for the Sabbath day, it's a good thing. If you want to know about a good thing, to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto his name, O Most High. It is not a hard thing. You don't have to be in church to tell God thank you. Amen. Thank you for my life. Thank you. I have so many good things to be thankful for. Amen. One of them is, as I have said before, that December 25th wasn't Jesus' birthday, and you didn't get mad and quit the church. 
appreciate that. I got so many good things to be thankful for. Amen. So our thanks needs to be specific. It needs to be consistent to God for all things. Thessalonians 5, 18, and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Again, it's not just when good things happen. It's even when bad things. And if I can learn how to give God thanks through that and look for something on the other side, it's difficult, I know. You fuss with it. You argue with it. You've heard this for years. And yet when it happens, you'll forget unless somebody reminds you to give God thanks in it. And without fail, Romans 121, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. Talked about this two weeks ago, that it was important to understand that there are people that, and I'll hear them say, I know that there's a God, but they don't give God thanks. Amen. They don't, they don't go ahead and connect with him. Well, a couple of uh, I was reminded of this, Joseph, out back. And there was that, y'all, do y'all remember Nebu, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Obed-Edom and the Ark of the Covenant and that big golden box? Well, it's all warped right now. It's, it's went through the flood. It's sitting out back. And I rode by it and I looked at it today and I thought about it. Chronicles 16, verse 7 tells us when that ark was coming back up the road, that on that day David delivered first his, this psalm to thank the Lord unto the hand of Asaph and his brethren. And, and he said, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory in his name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he's done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. When David said that, when the ark was coming up the road, David never had one single miracle in his life. He never had a miracle. But David looked back on what happened with Moses, what happened with Noah, what happened with Adam. He looked back over history, and he says, remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders, his judgments. Amen. Remember that. You may have never gone through a miracle in your own life. You may have never seen one, but you know somebody else that did. Give God a praise for theirs until yours gets here. And it's like sometimes, I don't know what it was. Maybe David just didn't need a miracle. Maybe he just thanked God all the way through life. But if you can find a miracle in David's life, let me know. Amen, because I can't find one. He's just a man who went through life singing and loving God. Yeah, his mistakes, of course, are chronicled, chronicled but, but also his victories. Amen, he just loved God. And it tells me that there are times, if I never get another miracle, if I never see God do another great deed, I'm going to give him thanks for what he has done. Amen, because I can look back over on my life and see it over and over and over again, the faithfulness of God. Amen, he's been good to me. So ways to show God our gratitude, give him your song. Give him your song. Verse 9 says, sing unto him, sing praises unto him. Our song is a powerful thing. Songs move us. David ministered uh, to Saul in songs. You say, Pastor, what, what, what do you mean giving him my song? Everybody here got a song. The Bible says Solomon had a song. He says he has one. So give God your song. What, you might want to write it. Oh, uh, well, I'm not a songwriter. It's only to God. Amen. God, I, that you delivered me from this. You healed my ear. You blessed me with the adopted kids. You threw two more at me. Amen. Get, just write down a song. Just, just write a song. Songs are important. Listen, at Christmas time, we hear songs of love. We hear songs of joy, of wisdom. Amen. Uh, freedom. Freedom. Every war has its songs. Courage. The impossible dream. I remember years ago, there was a show called Chariots of Fire. Bum, 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 bum. Huh? Remember that? There, there's, there's songs that just as soon as you hear them, you, you, you think about them. As soon as you hear uh, Rocky. I can't do it right now because I just did the other one. Huh? What is, what is it? Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. I walked out of Rocky, got punched in the nose. True story. It happened. Amen. Because uh, it, it, people are so excited about the song. Every, everything has a song to it. You know, uh, of late, I, I hate to hear the songs about uh, on hatred, you know, killing cops, abusing women. Those are in songs. People write songs about that kind of nonsense. Depression. Uh, that's usually country songs. <laughs> There's a tear in my beer and I'm waiting for you, dear. You know, uh, you know but, but everybody here's got a song. And, and you, may not, you may not have a song right now that, that is one of victory, but write your song. Say, God, I give you this. I'm going to give you my song. 
you know, to learn how to journal that way. Song of Solomon, again, the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. You know, uh, when I look into my, my heart and there is no song, then I made no impact on the world and I leave no memories to sing about. There, there are songs that you can come up with and you can sing. And I, I don't embarrass myself by trying to sing little jingles, but I've, I've, I, a lot of my theology is covered in people's songs. I've mentioned Larry Norman and Keith Green and, and men that I come up on listening to. And they, they would say stuff. And, and you've heard me in a sermon say stuff. They nailed him to the cross. They laid him in the ground, but you should have known they can't keep a good man down. That came from a song I heard uh, 35, 40 years ago. You know, I just, my, the songs, they perm. So you listen to right songs, eventually you'll find out that you'll, you'll begin to share them. You'll begin to say them. Give him your testimony. Talk you. Why well, you got a song? You got a testimony. If God did something for you, you got a testimony. If you're born again, you got a testimony. Amen. Talk ye of his wondrous works. In verse 9, David said, we always talk about what's important to us. Right now, of course, it is deer hunting for many of us. We just talk about it. We want to talk. Somehow, the, the points on the top of the head of the deer matter more than the meat on the back. I don't know why, but, but we just think the points are the big deal. I can be honest with you. It's what's in the skillet. I got home. Somebody gave me a couple of back straps. I kept them in ice all the way to Alabama. I was sick on Monday. It was a terrible sickness going to Alabama. I just could not. It was a food poisoning. And all I could think about is, am I going to enjoy Am I going to enjoy that back strap? And you know, by the time I got well enough to enjoy that fried back strap next to the potatoes and gravy, heaven slapped in my tongue, hallelujah, and I began to give God praise in the house. Amen. It was a good thing. I can't eat the horns. They look good on the wall, but you can't eat them. Talk about what's important. If you get a new car, you're going to talk about it. A new friend, you're going to talk about it. You close yourself. People don't know what God is like until we show them and tell them. Give God your testimony. Ask God, God, help me sharpen my testimony. Help me say it in such a way that people are interested in what I got to say and what he did. My whole life has been built around my testimony. Many of you have heard it, and I share it with people. In different times that God does things, I share it with you. On, on, on Every week, if God does something in my life, I'm going to share my testimony. Your testimony is important. Give God your testimony. God, you know what you did in my life. Now, he's put me in the life of people where I can share it. Remember, most of the things you go through is not for you. It's for somebody else. Amen. It's to strengthen them. 2 Peter 3, 16. We are epistles known and read of men. People read us. Again, let me go back to your attitude. If your attitude is sour and bad, people read that. See, you got to work on your attitude. Amen, y'all. I'm constantly dealing with my kids about attitude. And they, I, know, I don't care if they get tired of it. One day I'll be gone. They'll have kids, and they're going to have to deal with their kids about their attitude. It's, it's that important. So, so as you move through life, realize that you're being read and known of men. It, sometimes it ain't what I say. It's what they see. Amen. That's, that's, and when I come in the house and the little kids are here, I realize they, they, they know who I am. They're reading that in your life. So are you leaving? Are you living life like a book, a novel? Or are you only leaving a paragraph or a sentence? Amen. You want to leave something for people behind. Give him your attention and your affection. Verse 11 says, glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Give him your attention, your, your heart. Your moment, your mornings. You know, we choose whether we're going to be happy or miserable. It's your call. And being miserable, it dishonors our Father. Now, I heard something on TV the other day by a preacher that said that, that uh, poor people dishonor God. You know, and it just broke my heart. Because the scripture says, the poor we have, that, that we're going, they're going to be with us always. And if you saw where I came from, I would have hated to hear a preacher tell me that, that God was dishonored with me because I was poor and my mom and dad were poor. That, that's foolish talk, amen. That's silver spoon preaching. That's, that's preachers that have never known poverty in their life, amen. And they get up behind a pulpit and try to use scripture to build prosperity. That, that, that's not even a good thing to even say. So, so when I think about life, uh, I don't want to be miserable. I can be poor and not be miserable because I was amen I know the joys of commodity cheese when it come in on the truck right. amen and that chopped beef that was down there or whatever that was in that can amen I remember that kind of life I, and I, I didn't complain about it my dad had sardines that brought he brought sardines and, and uh, uh, potted meat we got the good stuff we got spam Amen. My dad had that bringing to work. There, there's nothing wrong with that. And as a matter of fact, it's what you've gone through in life that's molded you to who you are. 
Amen. So I, but I don't want to live life miserable. So I want to give God my attention, my affection. And I believe that he brings us up and out. I don't think it's the will of God for us to stay poor. Amen. I think there's a way that we can stay after the things of God and work our way through this thing. Can I get an amen? Work your way up and out. You know, we're in a great nation. We're in a great state. Amen. If you, if you want, you don't have to stay down. You can make a choice here to move up. Give him your tomorrows. I don't know what Wednesday holds. Thursday, Friday. I got ideas in my mind. I know what things I need to do as the, as the week moves on. But even through past all of that. In other words, God, I need your strength. I need your guidance. Would you guide me? Lord, there are people right now online. I already know this. They need your guidance. They need you to pull them out of loneliness by giving them a direction. God, they need a place in life that they can head toward. Lord, some of them need a new geographic location to move to. So I pray in the name of Jesus that you would bless them and you would give them guidance. Give them. God, I'm asking that they would give you their future. They would give you their tomorrows and give it over to them in Jesus' name. Amen? Remember his marvelous works and what he's done, his wonders, his judgment of his mouth. The success is in life. Not only your tomorrows, giving him your tomorrows, but give him your memory. Your memory. Uh-huh. Remember his marvelous works, things he's done, wonders, judgments. Give him your memory. The success is in life. They give him glory. Give him the failures of your yesterday. Amen. Yet give him the promises for tomorrow. When I think about giving God my memory, there are things that, that still haunt me to this day. And I say, God, you got to take that. Even while we were worshiping a while ago, I was asking when the song, when we do the songs, I don't just sing the songs. When I ask God to wash something away, by the time Tuesday gets here, I'm ready for something to get washed away. <laughs> Amen. If I'm running toward him, I'm running toward him. Whatever the song says, that's usually where I'm at in life. So, so I'm asking God, wash that away. Wash that memory of failures away. Amen. The problems that may be there tomorrow, wash that away. Chronicles 16, 34 will give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. His mercy is going to be there. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. Amen. That there is more. It turns denial. I, let me do, mention something about this coming Saturday. And if you're watching online and you're going to be here Saturday, listen to me. When you go through that line to get soups and stuff, get just enough for you. Don't come out walking with two or three bowls. Remember, there's people behind you. You know, when I ever hear that we, we don't have enough food to go around, take a quick look around yourself and be responsible and say, okay, i got to make sure everybody here gets something. Understand your pastor is probably going to be the last one in line. And you don't want me to go without I say that in humor. But I'm just saying, as you move through life, it's the same way. Many times we've got this buffet mentality. Amen. We, we hit just a little bit hard. So, so when I say that, I just say it in love to you. Amen. So it, gratitude is so important. It turns denial into acceptance. Chaos to order. Confusion to clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast. It can make Taco Bell good. Amen. Just the right gratitude. Amen. Just an appreciation. You know, when I was home, can I be honest with you? I ate one little piece of turkey because it wasn't what I was after. I wanted the dressing and the giblet gravy and that cranberry sauce. Amen. That sweet and that salty moment. Amen. And that's all I wanted. And, that when it, when that, and I got up and I was the last one into the kitchen. I mean, we done prayed and everybody's going through. And I looked over in that big old black skillet and there was just a little bit of gravy left. I almost panicked. <laughs> I scraped the bottom of that, and then, and, then, and then somebody said, hey, there's no more gravy. I thought, you sorry outfits. Y'all took almost all the gravy before I got in here. You know this is what I meant. I was pulling it off my boy's plates coming through the house. You know? My mama looked at me, and she said, and she's, in a, she's on a walker. She said, baby, I got you. I'll make you something to go. And she made me another pot of gravy just for her son. I love my mom. So thankful. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It can, gratitude turns a house into a home, a stranger into a friend. Gratitude makes sense of our past. It brings peace for today and creates vision for tomorrow. Now, let me close here. It is easy enough to be thankful in the good times. But I want to give God things in my life. You know, as we give gifts this year, make sure you give God. Give God your time. Give God uh, the, your song. Give God your, your memories. Say, God, I want to give these to you. 
Amen. And if you have to write them down or whatever, however you want to do this thing, but you've got to give this to God. It, it's so important. It's easy enough to be thankful in the good times, but our faith teaches us to be thankful in the difficult times. God, I give you this trouble. I give you the problems that my friends and family are going through. I know only you can turn this thing around and make it right or give, or give it an opportunity to make sense. Again, Philippians 4, 6, don't be anxious about anything but in everything. By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts. I'm praying for peace for you over the holidays, that God will bless you. My last point, give God your nights. Give him your nights. David said in Psalm 119, 62, At midnight I will rise to give thanks. At midnight I will rise to give thanks. In other words, there are times in life God will wake you up. And it's in the night storms, it's in the night terrors of life. At that time, God, I just want to give you my night. I want to give you thanks. Midnight always has signaled a time of difficulty in our lives. Amen. If I can get up and say, God, I just give you this night. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I do know this. The scripture says that, that weeping endures through the night and joy comes in the morning. So I'm going to give you this night. And I'm going to believe the joy is going to show up here in the morning. Amen. Stand with me. We are citizens of heaven. And thanks is the language of heaven. Amen. Believe that in all my heart. Thanks is that appreciation. Amen. I love when I hear the church folk thanking one another for what they're doing. Always appreciating those at the door when they come in. Amen. Those that are back there in the, in the booth that are unsung heroes, those that are on the stage here that we've made famous over the years. Amen. That we give God thanks for those that work in our, our student ministries that are blessing the kids in school and taking time. Those in the nursery. Amen. I, every now and then, some lady will come along and she'll look at me and she'll say, How's Josiah? How's Judah? And they'll say, I've changed their diaper. You, you changed my boy's diapers? Hear that? Amen. I'll hear that. I go, well, thank you. Amen. I appreciate that. You know, life is about thanking those that we forget have stayed the course, done things over and over. And as citizens of the kingdom of God, you are to be more patient. You are to be more loving, to be more forgiving. You are to, you're being read by people. They're watching your actions. There are those out there that know where your buttons are, and they're pushing them. And they're seeing if you're going to keep reacting the same old way you were. Or is this Jesus real in your life? Amen. Give God your buttons. And ask him to hide them. Amen. If they no longer affect you anymore. Father, I thank you for this house, for your people. I ask your blessing to be upon them. I give you praise for all the things that we can give you. There's just a simple few. God, we give you our song. Our song in the night, our song in the morning. God, our hallelujahs, our glories, our holies, our thank you, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. We give you our songs. We thank you for this house. Bless your people. Change us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a praise before you walk away. Thank you, Lord. I thank God for you. December 25th, Jesus, not his birthday. Amen. God love you.